in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. Inspiration for what to share from my testimony came as these lyrics from Zach Williams and Dolly Parton's song slapped me in the face on Monday evening. I shouldn't have been surprised. God has always spoken to me through song. From the church lady singing Jesus Loves Me and Go Tell It on the Mountain to me in nursery school, to pouring out my heart singing Lord I Lift Your Name on High on summer mission trips in youth group at high school. My church experience is what one would call ordinary. I could really point to, point to many moments where I knew Jesus and he really came to me and I came to know more about him. But my testimony doesn't come from a monumental moment in church, but from many moments of God reminding me, hey, Lindsay, I'm still here. Look at, looking back at every moment, I know there was Jesus. Cancer, the Lord knows it's my least favorite word. But every time it appeared in my family's life, there was Jesus. My dad was given six months to a year to live when I was nine years old. He was diagnosed with a rare cancer. Why would this happen to our young family? Why would he be put through this? The battle wasn't easy. My dad got very sick. He lost a lot of weight, missed a lot of work. My brother and I were young. We were in fourth and fifth grade. We cried in school. I remember kids making fun of us. I remember hours spent in the hospital waiting room. I remember the fact that chicken noodle soup made my dad sick. I still can't eat it to this day. I remember my mom wondering if she was going to be a widow at the age of 33. My dad said, we're not going to let this change our family. We're going to pray and we're going to fight. And that's what we did. And through it all, there was Jesus. At 14 years old, my dad was died when I was 14 years old, my dad was diagnosed with cancer a second time. Yep, you're, he beat that first cancer, and a second time was diagnosed. Surely God was joking this time, right? The same guy who just proved he was one of your toughest fighters? The guy who had lost his own father to cancer just a year prior? At this point, I'm in ninth grade. I'm dealing with high school friend drama. I'm trying out for the cheerleading team. All I can think about is, why is God doing this to us? This time brought radiation for my dad, hair loss. My brother shaved his head in support of him. Don't look at me. I just mentioned I was trying out for the cheerleading squad. Um, but this truly rocked our community. Uh, everyone loved my dad. People, people poured out by the masses and prayed for him. The last thing I wanted to do, though, was go to church and talk about it. But people would stop me on the street, people I didn't know. They would say, we're praying for your dad. We're talking about your dad in church. God's with your dad. He's here. I was in shock. I was in awe. Okay, God, I hear you. You're here again. I'm trusting you. My dad beat cancer again. For a man who never thought he'd see his kids graduate high school, he has seen so much more because in those moments, there was Jesus. In 2012, my dad threw blood, clot, blood clots to his lungs, saddlebags like a horse over the top of his lungs. He spent over 20 days in the hospital, in and out of the ICU. I was newly married. My brother and his wife lived in Texas, and I needed to offer my mom a new kind of support, one that an adult child needed to offer. I didn't know what that looked like. It wasn't cancer this time, but something new and scary for our family. We were broken. How much more could one man's body truly handle? But in the mess of the hospital, amongst the wires, the tubes, the beeping machines, holding us up when we didn't know the words to pray, there was Jesus. My dad pulled through again. Fast forward to 2014. My husband and I have a toddler, and we're learning and we learn we're expecting our second child. Most certainly overcome with joy, we planned for Brooklyn to announce our pregnancy to her grandparents. But our plans were halted and the world seemed to stop spinning when I began to miscarry at home alone with Brooklyn. It was early in the pregnancy, and I still have more questions than I do answers. Brooklyn, at not even two years old, got my phone for me so I could call my husband or my mom. I still to this day am not really sure who I called. 
I grieved. I felt alone. I couldn't have imagined why this would happen. The doctors had no answers. They said it's early. Try again after your next cycle. Six months later, I had a second miscarriage. Broken doesn't begin to describe where I was. I remember clinging to Brooklyn singing Silent Night, rocking her to sleep. Wondering why would God have this plan for me? I questioned him. I fought him. I fought him hard. I challenged every answer that he seemed to point me to. Those weren't good enough. Those didn't make sense. But through it all, in my darkest hours, there was Jesus. His answers were right. I did need to trust him because we happily welcomed Penelope into our family in 2016. As she came during the perfect season of life for our family, my dad, yep, the stalwart of positivity and strength, had been diagnosed with a third, completely different cancer. You begin to have a sense of humor about it all because, along with your faith, laughter does help a little. Seeing my dad through his third battle with cancer was different. I was a parent myself. I now question, what would I do if I was in his shoes? How would I react? I would like to say I'd be as positive as he was, but I do know that through it all, there would be Jesus. Since this fall, I've been having some of my own health issues, and I still have certain days where I'm not operating at full capacity. When you sit in a waiting room waiting on test results from a doctor, so much flashes before your eyes. I think back to all the times my dad had been in those waiting rooms. What must have been going through his head? I certainly realized I wasn't carrying the same strength as him. My anxiety came on quick, and it came on fast. I was only about nine months into my job here at Geneva and nervous about what taking time off would look like. My brain capacity and function at the end of October this fall was truly only at about 3 to 5 percent. Leaving the couch for a few days was nearly impossible, so working was completely out of the question. Fortunately, this Geneva community is made up of people like Willem, like Dean Swank, like President Trump and Andrea, like my full marketing team. I was comforted in prayer. I was talked to peer to peer about how to handle the situation. Stress seemed to lift off my shoulders. Sure, the worries remain and I still have rough days. But I'm grateful for my journey. I'm blessed to be at Geneva. I'm thankful my dad is still alive and I'm always reassured that there is Jesus.